Let's go back now to our top story on Iraq. Phyllis Bennis is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. She joins us live from Washington, D.C. Welcome once again to Al Jazeera, Phyllis. Your thoughts, please, on what Thank President you. Obama had to say that the U.S. has no complete strategy for helping Iraq to fight ISIL. Well, I think the problem is that the U.S. has a strategy. The problem is it's the wrong strategy. It's not working. It's a failed strategy. And because President Obama doesn't seem to have a different strategy, he's saying that we don't have a strategy at all, which is really no good answer at all. We've heard from President Obama over and over again, there is no military solution. I think that's absolutely right. The problem is, if you look at what the U.S. does, it doesn't reflect that. All they're putting their money and time and high-level attention into is the military side. And that's making any political effort virtually impossible. So even at a later point, if they realize, well, we've got to do some of this political stuff, they're making it impossible for that to succeed. So I'm afraid that the strategy that is underway, which is to send more arms to the guys that we consider the good guys, but they keep getting those arms lost to the bad guys, uh, that's a big part of it. Training good guys, but we can't seem to find enough good guys to fight the bad guys. And then it suddenly seems that a lot of the good guys end up fighting with the bad guys because they fight better and they win more victories. So we have a very serious problem here, not that we don't have a strategy, but that we have a losing strategy. It seems at this point, Phyllis, that the only thing the U.S. president is clear about is that he does not want U.S. troops on the ground. Well, that's certainly a part of it. The problem is even that isn't quite accurate. There are at least 3,100 U.S. troops on the ground, boots on the ground in Iraq. There are presumably more pairs, perhaps, of sneakers rather than boots of special forces and CIA agents on the ground, secretly, that we don't even know about. Uh, but the problem is when they had 150,000 troops at a time occupying Iraq, they weren't able to create a military that could fight back it's not about the training not being adequate. It's because this military doesn't know what it's fighting for. And the troops in that military, the Iraqi, the Iraqi army, they don't know what they're fighting for and they don't believe that the army uh, that they're in should be accountable to a government that they don't believe in. That's the real problem that we face. You know, Iraq in the past has had armies that were perfectly capable on their own without a lot of training from the U.S. Uh, to fight back. When in the 1980s, when the, the Iraqis were at war with Iran for a decade, Iran was far stronger, had a much stronger military, and yet the Iraqis uh, were able to fight them to a standstill where the only help they got from the U.S. was help in targeting their chemical weapons. But the actual military strategy was worked out by Iraqis, fought by Iraqis, and they were perfectly capable of that because they thought they were fighting for something. Now the problem is they have a government that is absolutely sectarian, where Sunnis and, and others in, in the country do not feel that this government represents their interests. And while the new foreign minister, uh, foreign, uh, sorry, the new prime minister, Abadi, whom President Obama met with today in Germany, he talks a good talk about the need for a unified government to represent all Iraqis, but he doesn't walk the walk of making that happen. So right now, what Sunnis are seeing is that the government doesn't represent them, they believe and they've seen evidence that this government uh, represents only part of Iraq, that it represents Shia interests, not Iraqi interests, and they have very little interest in fighting for them. As a result, they're much more likely to go with ISIS, not because they necessarily agree with yeah. the violence that ISIS represents, yeah. but because it's a way of fighting back. Yeah, as we saw, uh, some uh, Sunni tribes have pledged allegiance to ISIL recently. Phyllis, thanks very much. Uh, great to have you on the show as ever.